Distinguished delegates, uh, welcome to this short video uh, showing the recommendation and constraints of the virtual presentation mode. So the objective of the virtual participation modes are first of all the carbon footprint. We want to minimize the carbon footprint uh, of the meeting by uh, reducing the number of people that have to travel to the uh, to a conference place or to a local meeting point for the conference or the meeting. The second thing is we want, pro uh, we want to provide a, a virtual coffee break atmosphere. The coffee break is a discussion environment for relaxed creative thinking and so we want uh, the virtual uh, coffee break has to be at least some uh, aspects of a co coffee break where you're sitting together discussing some facts from the talk or discussing uh, things that are interesting and related to the talk that might be not uh, part of the feedback and the questions after uh, the talk. The third thing is the capacity building. We produce digital presentations with Audi campaigns prior to the meeting and this are at the same time capacity building material that um, fed into the joint uh, depot of resources. Second thing, access and travel expenses. Uh, we want to minimize the financial constraints for participants, especially from developing countries, so that they can uh, participate in a meeting without having this financial limitation of the travel expenses there. So what are the recommendations for the virtual participation mode? Um, first of all, we want, want to mention that it's nearly impossible to join the meeting in the virtual participation mode and be at the same time in your office and doing your partially or fully your regular work. So um, remove from your office uh, if it is possible and uh, join, the, uh, join the meeting in a, in a room where you have internet access and maybe have access to, uh, to a convenient place where you're not disturbed during the meeting. Uh, secondly, you have to synchronize in a little bit with the time zone of the meeting location and this time it's UN campus in Bonn and the European time so that you can uh, accept the feedback and the video conferences according to the, to the meeting itself. Uh, the next thing you have a local coffee prepared for your virtual coffee break so make it mostly convenient uh, in, uh, in the virtual sessions for you so if, you have, if there's a coffee break have a coffee with you. The, sec the, the fourth thing is communicate it to it, your agency, institution or NGO uh, that you are joining a virtual conference and that you will not be available uh, for, appropriate, for a number of days where you join the conference. So overall, uh, organize yourself as if you are planning uh, an in-person attendance of the meetings. So looking on local and regional meeting points, uh, there might be more than one uh, participant close to you that want to join the conference. Uh, so establish a local or regional meeting point of people that uh, that join the conference with you so you have a face-to-face -face opportunity to communicate and discuss things uh, at the regional or local meeting point. Uh, the UN campus in Bonn is uh, also a regional meeting point of people that join the conference with you. So it's not an extraordinary point where there is a, a, a real face-to-face -face presentations. All the presentations are presented virtually um, as in, in all other regional or local meeting points. The conference servers uh, provide the IT infrastructure, video conferencing facilities, the provision of the videos, the forum, um, a discussion board or Twitter channels where you can discuss things or a video um, uh, conferencing environment so that you can uh, place the feedback or post questions or playback just the presentation that are provided from the conference server. So locally you access this knowledge, you can put it on a data projector or uh, replay it on different videos and then you have additional to this uh, presentation and feedback of the questions you have this local uh, environment for for face to face discussions so looking on the uh, local and regional meeting points uh, there might be in one area in india for example a regional meeting point uh, 
uh, or local meeting point with with four people and there might be in El Salvador uh, a regional meeting point with three people and there might be isolated participants that don't have uh, the opportunity of local face-to-face -face communication but anyway they can join uh, via the conference servers uh, via flash meeting open meeting video conferencing systems forum or video playback you can join the conference and provide feedback and questions to the to the presenter so what are the minimal IT requirements or what are the recommendations for establishing a local or regional meeting point um, first of all, it is recommended that you have a one laptop or PC with a webcam and one data projector for playback of the presentations and following the video conferences in flash meeting or open meeting. If you have a group of people uh, at your local or regional meeting point, uh, then it might be uh, reasonable or it is recommended to have one additional laptop with webcam for asking questions, provide feedback and comments, which will be used for all of the people that, that join the uh, video conference at your local meeting point or regional meeting point. When someone at your local or regional meeting point wants to ask a question or provide a comment, then he moves on to the laptop with the webcam and uh, logs in with his own name and uh, requests a comment. Um, the request will put this name into a queue and you have to wait until it's your turn for uh, for giving you the opportunity to share your comments or your questions with the community. After finishing your comment you log off again with that one laptop and uh, so that other ones can log in at the video conferencing system. Most of the time, video conference servers have a limited number of participants uh, according to the performance of the server. So, uh, uh, organizing a regional or local meeting point like this and logging off after the provision of a comment or asking a question, then it uh, extends the number of participants of the meeting. So what are the benefits for the capacity building program of spatial public health? Um, for the um, multidisciplinary science, there is a, a need for, um, for accessing knowledge from a different discipline or be aware of some uh, interfaces uh, between different disciplines. For this, um, it is necessary that um, video and web-based presentations are long-term available to access the videos um, uh, offline for offline usage uh, without connectivity to the internet. Uh, this can be done by, by a video downloader or as a Firefox plugin or download just the web-based presentations. And it is essential for asynchronous access to the content so that people can use the content when it's needed and not just only when it's presented at a conference. Last but not least, uh, we the virtual presentations, questions, feedback and discussions are split into the presentation itself. It's just the video playback and the web-based presentation for asynchronous access or the, the access um, at the presentation time. Uh, are, and the question and feedback where can, forums can be used for other chronos access or video conference systems for a, a synchronous uh, feedback and questions handling these questions and feedbacks and the third thing is the, uh, the virtual coffee break for a relaxed creative discussions in small groups so all presentations are prepared prior to the meeting, made available online, download on demand uh, for, for the participants. Uh, the discussion can be handled asynchronous with a discussion forum or directly after the presentation in a video conference system where the people can directly uh, talk to the to the presenter and ask and ask uh, ask questions or provide feedback to the talk
and that's it so far a summary of um, the virtual participation mode uh, for conferences uh, at the UN campus in Bonn.